Hello, we are in beautiful Beirut, Lebanon for the World Allergy Organization 2019 WIS Conference, which is co-sponsored by the World Allergy Organization and the Lebanese Society of Allergy and Immunology. We've been meeting and hearing the most key and cutting edge uh, topics in allergy and immunology this week. And here to share some of that information with me today is Dr. Mona Al Hamad. She was one of the prestigious international speakers and I've asked her to share with us her favorite topic that she's presented. So Dr. Al Hamad, what topic have you chosen to talk with me about today? Uh, thank you, Dr. Wallace, for the nice introduction. Uh, yes, I'm going to talk about allergic rhinitis, uh, the inflammatory lineup. Uh, it's a very, uh, I think, important topic, both for the specialist as well as for the primary care physician, in order to identify patients with allergic uh, rhinitis from clinical point of view, phenotypic point of view, as well as most of the common inflammatory pathway. Um, I think the caveat for this meeting is just to uh, put a flavor of some of the local data that we have, especially in the uh, Middle Eastern countries. Uh, uh, many of, of the you know, delegates are not aware actually of local data that belongs to their countries. So it's good to sort of give up them some information and data about what's actually prevailing uh, in terms of, of an upper airway disease uh, uh, among their countries and how to compare this with an international sort of scope of allergic rhinitis. And if you had to say the key message in terms of the management of the dis this disease for patients in this area of the country, the Middle East, the Arab countries, what would you say is that key message? I think one of the uh, main key messages that I'm going to deliver is really the right diagnosis, how to uh, specifically identify patients with allergic phenotype, uh, whether it's an upper or lower airway. We're all aware of the, the United Airway concept. Um, you know that we know that everybody who sniff and sneeze is not alert, is, is not rhinitis. So uh, using the proper diagnostic tool, uh, of course, in the presence of, of an, a very perfect history and exam, and implement this with some of the diagnostic tools that I'm going to highlight, especially similar to skin prick test or maybe a nasal challenge or maybe a nasal smear for eosinophils. Some of the uh, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, more specific tools that can be handled by the specialist, but also good for the general practitioner to be aware of in terms of a referral pathway. And for the patient, what difference does it make in their treatment of this disease state? Once it's diagnosed, what can they look forward to from the physicians in this area? Uh, nowadays, we are all in the era of precision medicine and everybody is, is quite thrilled about the innovation of biologics and targeted therapy for many respiratory allergy diseases and we've already had a, a big portfolio of, of biologics and specific uh, uh, targeted uh, management uh, therapies for, uh, for example, allergic asthma or other uh, phenotype, uh, phenotypes of asthma. Um, so in, in this concept, I think if we uh, were able to diagnose or properly diagnose patients with certain phenotype of rhinitis, we are heading toward giving them the right management. And this is all going to uh, you know, reflect back on patients' uh, efficacy, on patients' uh, quality of life, and hopefully this is going to cut the huge cost in the medical health related to the nonsense use of other therapies uh, if it is not targeted. So if you had an unlimited budget, what would be the number one research in allergic rhinitis that you would encourage over the next five years? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, the, I think uh, really uh, proper phenotyping of patients with allergic rhinitis uh, and we're, we're talking, we've heard so many uh, actually key uh, lectures about the phenotypic uh, trait for, for rhinitis, an allergic rhinitis or rhinosinusitis. So I think uh, we are heading into more precision uh, if I have the budget. Uh, definitely I will plan uh, a project sort of to look into these phenotypic uh, differences uh, among these patients presenting with uh, uh, rhinitis in the background of an allergic disease. 
Um, it would be interesting to know, like for example, uh, the variation, the global variations between Middle Eastern sort of population, Asian population, and North American. It's you know, it's it's very interesting era. I think we're reaching one of, for example, one of the issues is looking at the uh, eosinophilic sort of uh, profile in patients with nasal polyposis or allergic rhinitis. Uh, it differs. We, are, we we know it's, it's more of an eosinophilic. However, uh, our Chinese uh, population have got some uh, recent publication of a neutrophilic phenotypic. So, how this is going to actually implement the management? Uh, it would be very interesting to get a flavor of this and start with our local data. Well, thank you so much, Monica, for spending a few moments with us and sharing your knowledge. Thank you, Leo. It's been really a pleasure. Much.